very glad to be back with you and today I've got a dynamics problem involving a pendulum. Now this is out of a homework set I assigned my students and they had some questions so maybe it'll help you too. What we're going to do is we're going to say we've got a pendulum with a length of one meter and we're assuming all the weight is concentrated in the little mass at the end. If you're keeping track of these things in English anyway that's called a pendulum bob. The thing there is a bob. And we're going to bring it back to 60 degrees from the vertical and we're going to drop it and let it, let it uh, move. Where's my pendulum here? And we're going to figure out the velocity as we go through the vertical. Now, I don't have a really good pendulum here. This is probably not the official use for a computer power brick, but here you go. This makes an acceptable pendulum for what we're trying to do. So we start with the pendulum. Let me do one more loop out of that. Start with the pendulum vertical like this. Bring it back to 60 degrees. That looks like it's about 60. And let it go. All right. So what we're doing is we have zero velocity here. Gravity will uh, accelerate the pendulum and we'll go through the vertical here. Maximum velocity will be right there. So what is that final velocity? I'll just put this over here, I guess. All right. So we've got a given statement. Let's say find. We don't have really a problem unless there's something we're trying to find. So we're trying to find v final. The velocity as the bob goes through the vertical. And since we're going to use g, f, s, and then a for our format, We'll put solution here, okay? There's basically two ways to do this. One is an energy method and one is to use uh, forces. Um, the energy method is really the easy method and the force method is the hard method, but there may be some reasons you want to use the forces. So we'll start with the easy one, get what we're sure is the right answer, and then go back to the force method and uh, we can uh, use our energy method to double check it. So let's start there. And solution one, I'll call that the energy method, whoops, energy and frame, right? Yep, energy method. Okay, we're going to have the potential energy equals kinetic, kinetic energy. Okay, so when the bob goes back like this, that extra height there it gets gives it potential energy. Energy it doesn't have when it's right there. When we let it go, that potential energy converts itself into kinetic energy down there. At no point do we actually have to know any of the forces acting on it other than we have to know the acceleration of gravity. So this is a pretty clean solution if all you need is the velocity. Well, the potential energy is mgh and the kinetic energy is one-half mv squared. And this is v in the tangential direction. Okay, that's tangential, that's radial. If, you're, if the velocity component is pointed at the pivot, that's radial. If it's parallel to that, or sort of perpendicular to that line, it's tangential. We're working with tangential velocity. Well, it's interesting to note that mass shows up on both sides of this. Well, because of that, I can divide it through, and I'm going to get, if I solve this, my tangential velocity, and this is really at v final, so I'm actually going to, I'll change that, I'll make that actually v final is the square root of 2gh. Notice wasn't, what doesn't show up in that. Mass doesn't show up. Turns out it doesn't matter what the pendulum weighs. Okay? You can weigh anything as long as that's really a good pivot and as long as the, the mass is concentrated down there. Well, put some numbers into this. You get 2 times 9.81 meters per second squared times the height. Well, we don't know the height yet. That's the height right there. Okay, well, h equals the length of the pendulum right there minus that distance right there. So that's one meter minus one meter times some trig unit there. Well, if that's uh, 60 degrees right there, cosine of 60 degrees is going to be that length. Okay, cosine 60 degrees, which happens to be one half. So that's one meter minus one-half meter, so one-half meter, okay, that's pretty straightforward, so I'll put one-half meter in there and take the square root of the whole thing, all right? So at this point, there's two things we want to check, all right? We want to check we've written this out correctly, and more important, we want to check the units, okay? I've got this written out correctly. Do the units work out? Because I, I tell you this all the time, if the units work out, the numbers will mostly come along for the ride. If the units are not correct, then stop right there because there's no, re no way the numbers are going to be right. So we're going to check this out. I'm going to get meters times meters, so it's meters squared over seconds squared. 
I'm going to take the square root of that, so I'll get meters per second. Okay, that looks like the right unit. So really what I've got here now is going to be the square root of 9.81. Well, let's see, square root of 10 is about 3.3 something. So a square root of 9.81 ought to be a little less than 3.3. Turns out it is 3.132. Okay, so the units work out and the number makes sense. Even without the calculation, that looks like about the right answer. That, that looks like the, that could be right, passes the sniff test. So we already know that V final equals 3.132 meters per second. Now that was the easy way. The hard way, which is often the one they want you to do in the book, requires us to start looking at forces. Okay, so let's do the uh, force method here. Okay, now if you draw the pendulum bob right there, that little mass at the end of the pendulum, let's draw the forces acting on it. Well, there's a force in the radial direction, and there's weight. That's pretty much it. Well, that doesn't help that those two aren't lined up. Let's do this. Let's make that the, you know, actually x isn't good. Let's make this the tangential direction, which would normally be x, and the radial direction, which would normally be y. And let's have that be the, uh, counterclockwise, be the positive sign convention for rotation. So that's positive tangential, positive rotation, positive angle. All right, and let's make a change to this now. That's 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 a. That's that's the initial free body diagram without any of the uh, components set up. So let's do this now. Let's have W in the tangential direction, and W. Oops, that's not good. W in the radial direction. All right, and now we've got the, the force in the radial direction. And I'm going to write this here. This is I'm going to call that inertial force. Oops. Ah. Okay. I'm calling this inertial force. This is ma. This is the right side of the equation. F equals ma. It has the units of force, and if we treat it as a force, we'll mostly get the right answer. In fact, we'll always get the right answer. Okay. It's not strictly speaking a force. So if you go show a physicist this, they'll tell you there is no such thing as inertial force, and that's correct. But if I treat it like a force, I'm going to get the right answer. So being an engineer, not a physicist, I'm going to treat it as a force. And there we go. So we've got a force balance in the radial direction and a force balance in the tangential direction. Well, I don't care what's going on in the radial direction. I only care what's going on in the tangential direction. So let's write out the sum of the forces in the tangential direction. And I'm going to get minus mat plus wt and that has to all equal zero. And it has to equal zero because I'm calling that a force. And really this would be equal to ma. The other way to write this is that w in the tangential direction equals ma in the tangential direction. And that's just Newton's law. That ought to look pretty familiar to us. I'm going to keep going up here. I've got enough room. So right now all we've got is pretty much an algebra and kind of a bookkeeping problem really. So I know what the acceleration is in the radial direction. If I were to integrate the acceleration, I could get the velocity. I'm going to start radial tangential direction. If I integrate the acceleration in the tangential direction, I'm going to get velocity. So let's see. If I know that w in the tangential direction equals w sine theta, that's basic um, trigon trigonometry. But there's a good way to check this. A lot of times students will mess that up. You know it's got to either be sine or cosine, but you don't know which it is. All right, so here you go. The, the tangential component of weight will eventually be zero when theta equals zero. When theta equals zero, weight goes that way, tangential's that way, so of course the tangential component of weight will be zero. Well, is that zero when theta is zero? Sine theta goes to zero when theta is zero? So yes, I know that's correct now. So I've got that, and uh, let's write this out here. One other thing. I'm going to want to write this out. If I've got an angle over here, I'm probably going to want an angle on the other side. So I'm going to write W sine theta, for that, that component right there, equals M. By now, instead of A sub T, tangential acceleration, I'm going to write that in terms of an alpha. So AT equals R alpha. And I'm doing that because I've got an angle over here, I'll put an angle on the other side. That's, that's just, it's a simple way to do this. 
There's one other thing here though. If A is positive that direction and angle is positive that direction, I've got this backwards, well according to the sign convention, that's actually a minus sign there because this goes with the sign convention and that goes against the sign convention. That's all that's going on there. So I'm going to put minus M R alpha there. Okay, well that doesn't look too helpful. Eventually I'm going to need a velocity, not an acceleration. So that's also M R D omega dt. All right. So now I've got a velocity right here. You can tell I'm getting close to the end. The problem is right now, I don't want that time there. I want probably an angle there. If I'm going to integrate eventually, I want this to be an angle down there. So I want d omega d theta, not d omega dt. Well, how do you do that? Now here's, here's a, way, a good way to do it. The definition of omega is it's d theta dt, right? That's just the definition of an angular velocity. Well, this d theta and this is dt, those are both numbers. I don't know what they are, but they're little infinitesimal numbers. Turns out I'll never know what they are. But I can use d theta and dt to stand for numbers as a variable, just like any other variable. So until I integrate, I can push d theta and dt around just like I can any other variable. Let's do this. If that's true, then dt equals d theta over omega, or 1 over dt. I'll get my head out of your way here in a second. So I can solve for dt if I want. Well, dt is in the numerator, the denominator, so I'll put that in the denominator. So right there, 1 over dt equals omega over d theta. And that's just algebra at this point. I mean, yeah, there's d's all over the place, but this is still just algebra. Haven't integrated yet, so we're really not, this isn't even really calculus yet. By the way, w equals mg. So let's put all that stuff in here. mg sine theta equals minus m r d omega d theta actually make sure I say this, d omega d theta and there's an omega in there. Alright, so I've got that all worked out. I'm going to cancel out the m. Let me rewrite this. g sine theta equals minus r omega d omega d theta. Ugh. Last thing now i got to do is clean this up. I'm going to put the d theta on this side of the equation. g sine theta equals minus r, actually I'm going to put the r over there too, equals minus omega, yeah, one more try at this. d theta equals minus omega d omega. Oh my gosh. That was an awful lot of work to get down to that last little expression. But see what I got now? I got everything with omega on that side and everything with theta on that side. Got the d's there. How does one get rid of that? One integrates. So what I'm going to do is this. g over r integral from theta zero to theta final sine theta d theta equals minus the integral from, let's see, omega zero to omega final, d omega, there. So that's the expression I've got to integrate. Now this is turning out to be kind of a long video. If you want to fast forward, that might not be bad. I'm going to erase this to make some room here. Okay, so I've got that one. Once I start integrating, I'm going to skip a couple of steps here. And um, what you're going to finally wind up with is this g over r, okay, cosine theta final minus, oops, cosine theta zero equals one half omega final squared. Solve that and you're going to find out that omega final equals square root 9.81. Well, that looks awfully familiar. We saw that before and that's going to be uh, 3.132, this is going to be in radians per second, all right? Last thing I need to know is that velocity equals r omega. Velocity equals r omega. r is the length, r is 1. So that equals 3.132 meters per second. And son of a gun, that's what we got before. So it took a little while to get here. And I appreciate you sticking with me over this fairly long derivation. So we've found the, the velocity at the bottom of the pendulum's travel, 
having started at 60 degrees, and we did it two ways. The first way we did an energy method, and the second way we did a force method. Fortunately, got the same answer both times. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.